Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Marr. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, give us a little information on uh, the BC mammograms. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you for the opportunity. You know, we're very excited to get people back to breast screening, particularly with uh, everything that else is going on during the pandemic. So what should people um, or who should be undergoing cancer screening? So our, our main um, uh, group of interest are women in their uh, 50s through to 69. Uh, they're all eligible for screening through the BC Cancer Breast Screening Program. And the availability uh, for average risk people in this age group would be every two years. And then once they enroll in our program, then we will help them uh, by sending out reminders of when to come back for the next screen. And that's an important point actually, is that uh, successful screening is really dependent uh, not just on coming for that first mammogram, but actually the, the serial aspect, the, the repeated uh, mammograms over the years. Um, so that's the um, um, sort of group that we focus on. Uh, we also have screening available for those in their 40s. We can talk about that, um, just a, fit, a few more details to think about there. Uh, and also beyond 69 into the 70s, it's also available with slightly different uh, arrangements. All right. So uh, is it for women over 40 with a risk of cancer or all women? That's a very good question. So definitely, uh, I think when we think of risk for breast cancer, then the first thing we think about is having a family history of breast cancer. So uh, and particularly a first degree relative. So like mom or sister. Um, uh, and for those, definitely uh, the screening is recommended. And actually for those, it's recommended every year, not every two years, but every year, starting at 40. Um, for those who don't have um, that identified risk factor, uh, they, could, they should st still think about breast screening, uh, whether it's appropriate or suitable for them. Uh, and we can talk about um, the additional things to consider in that age group. But certainly it is available for uh, women uh, in their 40s. Uh, but definitely we want those with that risk factor of family history to be aware that they should be coming every year. Now, are Indigenous, indigenous women more prone to getting breast cancer? Oh, is that very good. So that's something that we're very excited to have um, uh, research um, uh, activity underway for, which is to look specifically not just uh, at Aboriginal populations, but even um, particularly ours in BC. Um, so that we hope will give us the best estimate. And so I'd like to, I can, I'm happy to tell you that we're looking into that and specifically looking at our own population uh, and the risk and looking at other things like the appearance on the mammogram, whether we can tie that in, uh, whether that's related, um, but uh, um, that is coming. So we're looking at uh, data that will help us further uh, understand not just risk uh, for all women in BC, but for specific ethnicities within the province. All right. Now also, uh, what preventative practices should people practice? Yeah, I mean, that, that's great. And I think that's something that often gets uh, not as much attention as it perhaps deserves um, in cancer in general, in sorry, general cancer prevention. But uh, as you know, prevention is, of course, uh, an important aspect through all healthcare. Uh, but we know for breast cancer, and, and this is actually great because the, the things that we have identified um, also translate into preventive health measures for other diseases. Uh, but in particular, uh, they are maintaining a healthy body weight. Um, we know that obesity has, um, does increase the risk of breast cancer. Um, limiting alcohol intake uh, is also a, a proven um, uh, way to reduce your risk of breast cancer. Uh, maintaining an active lifestyle. And uh, then some things, a couple things that are a bit more specific to an individual situation, which would be breastfeeding um, is uh, preventive, uh, where, where that applies, of course. Uh, and also, uh, we suggest that individuals think carefully about um, use of hormone replacement therapy, because there can be an increased risk uh, associated with that. So that's some, that question is a bit more specific and uh, is best handled by having a discussion with the, the primary care provider. Okay. Now, also, uh, just moving into the um, the recent COVID nineteen vaccine relating to mammograms. Uh, so, should women who just recently received their vaccine shot should they be careful or when when booking for their mammogram? 
uh, in case mm -hmm. they get a false positive? Mm -hmm. So that's an excellent question. And that's something that we've really had um, a head start on seeing the effect of because the vaccination program in the United States uh, started before ours. And so we got a chance to learn from their breast screening uh, in, in the U.S. that this was happening. Uh, so let me explain um, what the situation is with the vaccine. So first of all, we're, of course, very excited that, that uh, people are starting to get vaccinated. Uh, but we know that um, lymph nodes, which are a, a reactive uh, organ in the body uh, in response to any kind of uh, insult, uh, which would include like a cut or a scrape, but also a vaccination, um, can enlarge as a result of the vaccine. And that it's important to understand that's a, a normal response. It's a normal response and it uh, is not dangerous and it is not, um, uh, it's not cancer and it doesn't actually increase your risk for cancer. So first of all, to understand that I think is important. Uh, the, the, the data, and again, um, mainly from the, the understanding in the United States is that there is um, a higher lymph node enlargement in the armpit of the arm that was vaccinated happening with the COVID vaccines as opposed to, for example, the flu vaccines that we normally see every year. Um, and because of that, there was concern that, well, if this is happening more frequently, then maybe they're going to start showing up on mammograms as enlarged lymph nodes, uh, which can be a sign of cancer. Um, but again, uh, not uh, in the case of when it's related to the vaccine. Okay. So your question is good. Can we be, so to speak, fooled by uh, lymph nodes that are enlarged by the vaccine and not by cancer if someone comes from the screening mammogram? And probably, yes, uh, we're starting to um, collect um, data on this uh, as our vaccination program is really getting rolling. Uh, and we're starting to see many individuals come uh, to the screening program who have had a somewhat recent vaccine, uh, whether that be weeks or even over a month. Um, and so we're starting to measure that. And it's a little bit early to say, to say reliably with data, with the numbers to, to know how often it's happening. But my, my feeling though, thus far is that it's very low and I'm encouraged by that. Okay. Um, and I think that's great news. Should, um, should there be a gap between the, the vaccine? Our residents here locally had uh, the vaccine clinic about two weeks ago. How, mm -hmm. how long should that gap between the vaccine and the mammogram be? Well, probably the lowest chance of if you're going to have enlargement, um, or if you do have enlargement, probably the, the, the best chance of them being back to normal is after six weeks. Um, but what we've recommended uh, from the beginning, and we haven't changed that based on what we've seen so far, is that if you already have your screening mammogram booked uh, and you happen to get the vaccine uh, even that week, uh, we're strongly recommending that you just continue with your appointment because we're starting to see, as I mentioned, that the, the probability of this showing up in your mammogram is very low, thankfully. Uh, and I think that we don't want to lose sight of the, the value of why we're doing this in the first place, which is to find breast cancers early. Okay. And so I, I really want the province to keep on with that. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Now, is there anything else that um, uh, patients should, should um, be aware of? And also, is breast cancer screening uh, just for women only, or should men also be aware of breast cancer? Mm, two good questions. So the first one, um, uh, just uh, further to the, uh, if there's concern about the vaccine, um, speak to uh, like our staff are all aware of that. In fact, when they come and they meet the mammogram technologist, uh, they will uh, actually ask if they've had a vaccine and they'll record that. And so that's very helpful for us uh, when we go to read it. So we can incorporate that into, um, uh, if we see, for example, the large lymph nodes, then we have an explanation. And so that also helps us to decrease the chances of us calling that patient back. Uh, unnecessarily. Uh, and your other question about um, breast cancer screening for males, certainly uh, male breast cancer does occur, but it's a very, very small percent. Uh, and so, so small, in fact, um, that in the normal average risk male population, it is not advantageous to screen for the disease. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Mark. Thank you for the opportunity.